Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you have welcomed us into your home, and we pray that you are having a blessed Holy Week. As here we are in Thursday, Holy Thursday, I pray that you get to go to Mass tonight, wherever you are. If not, you could watch EWTN, and I'm sure they're going to be giving us coverage all along the way. We certainly would love to hear from you. Send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And today our guest again is Dr. John Sotosanti, and he is a world-renowned doctor of dental surgery who has experienced an amazing conversion after discovering that the promises of sin and the world were empty and yeah. unfulfilling, as they always are. And he has written a great book about his journey to the truth of faith. And the great book is called Mortal Adhesions. And it's a surgeon's battles, the seven deadly sins, to find faith and happiness and inner peace. And this great book is available at EWTNRC.com. And you can go out to his website to say, what else did he say? What else did he do? Mortaladhesions.com. Oh, we, we had a great yeah. interview mm -hmm. with him yesterday. Today I'm even more excited to have him and to hear his journey. And I pray that especially during Holy Week, you are praying for your priests. Please pray for your priests and all bishops, our Pope all around the world, as they enter in and lead us as great shepherds to love Jesus more, to follow him more faithfully, and to set this world on fire with great love for Jesus. Well, this is a day that usually they rededicate themselves and their vows to being priests, the blessings of the oils that take place. So like you said, it's very important to pray for our priests on this holy day. So we look forward to speaking with John Sotosante more fully, uh, and he's gonna take us into true happiness, uh, the deadly sins, the opposite of those sins, and what he's experienced in his life. Great story of conversion this Holy Week. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, today we have again with us John Sotosanti, and now <clears throat> he is a world-renowned doctor of dental surgery, and he's experienced an amazing conversion after discovering that all the promises of sin of this world are empty and unfulfilling. If you live long enough, you find that out. And he wrote a great book about his journey to the truth of the faith a great book entitled mm. Mortal Adhesions. And it's a surgeon, is as a surgeon battles the seven deadly sins to find faith, happiness, and inner peace. And this great book is available at EWTNRC.com. You can go out to his website, mortaladhesions.com. John, it's wonderful to have you back today. It's a pleasure. And on the, our show yesterday, you went through a little journey of who you are and your own upbringing and success in life in so many ways and your radical need for conversion and some of the obstacles to that conversion in your own life, some of them having to do with real pride. It was blocking the way of the Lord in your life. And then your radical conversion, a deeper conversion that took place along the Camino de Santiago in Spain visiting the, gra uh, the grave of Juan de Ortega, who many people might not know, but that was one of the stops along the way. And that's where uh, this would become a saint's tomb was. And at some point they opened up that tomb and these beautiful fragrance came out, bees came out, he became associated with fertility. Uh, your daughter-in-law was having difficulty conceiving, great difficulty, and, and uh, Queen Isabella prayed there, right? So she oh, received a, a son, you know, praying there, conceived the son. And you said, you know, I, you knew what was going on. There was almost an apparition there of crosses that, that came up. 
and said, you know, I, I desire that my, my daughter-in-law, my son, have a, have a child. You know, I want a grandchild. <laughs> um, and uh, this takes place about nine months later. Um, and, and great things develop in your life. You also shared uh, early on about with all the success you had, you weren't happy and how, how many people can succeed in so many ways, whether it be, you know, you're a scientist, you're a renowned surgeon, it's, maybe it's athletics, maybe it's whatever, but you kind of reach a place and you say, I'm really pretty depressed, I'm not happy. You know, like, what, what is this all about? And, uh, and so I want to bring you back to happiness, mm -hmm. you know, in this segment, because you didn't discuss it much. You had examples of it, but you didn't do it there. You speak a lot about the seven deadly sins and what's the opposite of those sins. And so let's, let's go with whatever direction you want to take it, but with, you know, what, what is happiness? How did you find happiness? How did you come along that way? Who helped you with that? And go from there. The concept of four levels of happiness goes all the way back to Aristotle more than 2,000 years ago. More recently, Father Robert Spitzer yeah. has written on the four levels of happiness. Most people live at the lower levels of happiness. Level one essentially is instant gratification. Mm. You eat your favorite ice cream cone, you have a hot date on a certain night, but the next day things are different, it's gone. Or your favorite team wins a game and then loses the rest of the year. So where is that happiness? There was a man I saw on a TED talk and he starts off by saying, I'm really happy. I've decided in the next five years, I will visit 20 countries. I thought to myself, <laughs> I've done that all. I probably did 20 countries in five years and it didn't make me happy at all. Yeah. So that's immediate gratification. The second level is called the comparative level. This is where I compare myself with you. I buy a house, I notice you have a better view than I have. I train to be a good tennis player and I win a match, I win a tournament, it's wonderful, but you lose. I'm always comparing mm -hmm. myself to somebody else. I buy a car, it's the same thing. That's where most people live mm -hmm. today. It's just not enough to withstand the Turbulation, the tribulations that are going to come upon you mm -hmm. in life. We've already talked about cancer. Mm -hmm. Many people have gone there. We certainly will lose all of our family members eventually that are certainly older than us. So the next level is the compassionate level. In a compassionate level, I care more about other people than I do myself. I am willing to give up my time and money for a good cause and not expect anything in return. And that's a wonderful level. Quite a few people will mm -hmm. make it to that level. Mm -hmm. But only a small percentage of the population, especially today, will make it to the transcendent level. And in the transcendent level, you really feel that there's meaning to your life. Some people will say, well, there's meaning because of my career or whatever, but that could change mm -hmm. tomorrow. But if you believe in God and you feel you're a child of God and you can really experience <clears throat> all the joys of having a relationship with God and to believe in an afterlife that if you live the way God wants you to live, that when you do die, your soul will move on to heaven. It's a wonderful feeling and it totally changes the way mm -hmm. you look at the world. Well, and it's like, you know, from the Baltimore Catechism, why did God make me? Most important question in the world. He made me to know him, to love him, to serve him in this life and to, and to have peace and to be happy with him in the next. And if we know that, if we, if we believe that, because it can't just be words. Otherwise, then it's words without peace in my soul because you you might know that you could have memorized that statement but we don't live the reality of that right and so that's what we have to understand our purpose we wake up in the morning it's a good day we wake up we're vertical there's a purpose <laughs> we're vertical we get to stand up we get to be as cancer survivors i'm a cancer survivor i know that every day is a gift and after i went through cancer that 
birthday, it didn't matter because every day is a birthday because mm -hmm. we get to live with the knowledge that we didn't have to live and we're alive. And so that Holy Spirit infuses us and says, now go and live and set the world on fire. Be your true authentic self. And that's what God gets to do through us. But we have to know that. We have to die to ourselves. We have to lose ourselves that we would find the pearl of great price, Jesus mm -hmm. alone. Yeah. There is a wonderful book called He Leadeth Me, what written by Walter Sizek, a priest who was in Poland when the Russians came in and sent him to the Soviet Gulag. And in there, he was pretty much tortured on a regular basis and lived in a tiny little cell. And at one point in time, he was told they would probably kill him in the near future if he didn't sign papers. Mm -hmm. He was totally distraught. He went back to his cell and said, Lord, I turn my life over to you. Whatever you want for me is okay. If you want me to go through execution tomorrow, I'm okay with that. That is very freeing. In our own mm -hmm. lives, we can say, Lord, I expected to win this or have this happen and whatever, it didn't happen. But if that's what you want for me, mm -hmm. I'm willing to go along with it. Now, it's easy to say, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's, it's profound that these levels that you're sharing about that go back to Aquinas, right? And then Father Spitzer more, go more back recently. To, it's, right, the yeah. hole in the yeah. heart, the void. If It's called the existential vacuum. Mm -hmm. Another good book by Viktor Frankl, mm -hmm. The uh, Man's Search for Meaning is the name of the mm -hmm. book. He called it the existential vacuum. If there's a void in your heart, it, uh, nature hates a void and it'll fill it with something. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it tends to fill it with our addictions. Mm -hmm. And our addictions don't necessarily have to be drugs right. or something like that. Right. They can be houses, they can mm -hmm. be cars, they can be vacations on a cruise All material ships. things and material we think that's things get of it. the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to be aware of that. When we see ourselves wanting something too much, mm -hmm. You, in place of wanting the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to be content with everything or nothing, because then therein lies true peace. You right. mentioned sins or things that are sticking to us that are real hindrances, and so does that fit into your title, adhesions, yeah. mortal adhesions? Well, I, you know, being <clears throat> a surgeon and having a picture of me in scrubs in the book, tying together adhesions, which is a post-surgical complication that okay. many people undergo. Mm -hmm. I, that seemed to be something that fit together. And then I thought of adhesions are things that stick to us mm -hmm. that cause us problems. And think of addictions. They stick so tightly mm -hmm. we can't get rid of them. I had a pathology professor at Georgetown Medical School who said, don't ever smoke and he showed lungs, of mm -hmm. black lungs of autopsy cases. And then he went over in the corner and smoked a cigarette. Mm -hmm. He couldn't give it up himself. Mm -hmm. It was that tightly attached to him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because so it's not yeah. information, it's transformation. Like he understood, he taught mm -hmm. a class. He, he even showed you, but he wasn't transformed. Right. And so it's not just information that gets it, because we could know everything about everything, and but if we don't know Jesus and we don't have that encounter, that cavity is never going to get filled, ever. And so you talk about mortal adhesions. Tell us what you know about the seven deadly sins. I'm glad you asked. And if I'll just go through them, and if you want me to talk about one in particular, uh, you know, or several of them, please let me know. But the, one of the biggest and the most difficult to get rid of is pride. Another one is envy. Another one is wrath or anger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then sloth, which tends to be where we're lazy in regards to our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Av avarice or greed. Mm -hmm gluttony, and the last one is lust. So those are the seven deadly sins, and they really encompass a lot because mm -hmm. you can take any one of them and spread it out and say, well, maybe that falls into that one. Most of the things 
that we do will fall into one of those. Mm -hmm. It said that pride seems to be the touchstone. Do you agree with that or is pride? It's so difficult to get rid of. Even if I say to you, I finally did it. I finally got rid of the seven <laughs> right, deadly right, sins. Right, right. I've, I've gotten rid I'm of so pride. Holy. I am so holy. <laughs> I mean, you know, how do you get rid of pride? Mm -hmm. Someone asked me once, okay, John, from one to a hundred, if you're at one, you don't believe in God or anything. If you if you're at 100, you always believe in Christ and you're willing to do anything for him and you always stay there. Where are you now? Or where were you and where are you in now? Mm -hmm. I said, well, in the early days when I was building my castle um, and accumulating things, I was probably around 20, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then I gradually came up to about 50. And then he said, well, what happened to you when you went in the tomb and you saw the vision? I think it kind of shot me up to 80, 80 or 90. And every once mm -hmm. in a while, I try to reach 100, but you mm -hmm. can't stay there. Mm -hmm. You always drop back mm -hmm. and you even drop back to the lower levels of mm -hmm. happiness. And in fact, we all have fleeting, mm -hmm. fleeting moments of happiness, which is fine. <clears throat> but look for enduring happiness. Yeah. And and the deal is is God, every the beautiful thing is that our lives change, right? We're always in this beautiful transformation of change. I always say, make change your friend because change is constant. And whether it's health or relationships, people change, people come and go. But it's that utter dependency upon God. I mean, that's what he's going for, that no matter what, there's this severe surrender to him. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, take care of everything. And then we have to let our hands off of it, with, especially with humans. And marriage, in our marriage, you and your beloved are married longer than we. How many years? How now? many years? 55. 55, <laughs> and that's so beautiful. But marriage makes us holy. And your wife persevered. She believed for you what she could not see. She believed. She believed that God was going to hear her prayers, just like you believed that God was going to hear your prayers when you cried out, when you gave your heart cry. And that's the beautiful thing of the journey. And we're, none of us are finished yet. We're never finished until our dying breath. And Jesus will cause ruptures in our lives, things to happen to even make us more dependent upon him, which is the beauty of the journey and conversion for all of us. Didn't you feel you grew with your cancer? I felt oh, I grew with you, my cancer. I wouldn't have missed that journey for anything. I really wouldn't. And that's why you, at the end of it, I can remember that last day, I was sad that it was my last treatment because where I was with Jesus was this close and I knew it was gonna change. And I did, and it's almost like when you go on a, a fast too, it, because he's going for intimacy. And it was an intimacy of suffering. And you know, it's, it's, it's Paul, you, you're, you're counting the scripture, you're saying, therefore the grace of God go I, oh my God, count this all joy, this suffering. This is absurd. But that's the beauty of the gospel. That's the beauty of the journey. That's the beauty when we say, my life is not my own. I've been bought with a great price and to Jesus alone do I belong. And we get to sing his praises and tell of all the great things he's done to us and through us and for us. That's the beauty of that intimate journey that we have with him. Jesus is the only thing that doesn't change. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything will change. He is the constant. And it's so great to have that pillar because mm -hmm. nothing, everything else crumbles as mm -hmm. if it's made out of sand sooner or later but Jesus is a constant. Mm -hmm. Talking about cancer again, I bathed in the baths of Lourdes. What a wonderful feeling of peace when, it, when you come out of the water, your body initially is dripping wet and then it more or less in a matter of seconds dries up mm -hmm. and this feeling of peace descends upon you. Not, and maybe not everybody has that because they say, if you don't have faith, you may not experience it. Mm -hmm. Well, fortunately, I had see the, seen the blazing crosses, which mm -hmm. by the way, when they went one, three, five, seven, when I thought maybe the group is going to leave without me, <laughs> it, they went seven, five, three, one. Mm -hmm. They just didn't disappear. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful orchestration, like a beautiful sunset that mm -hmm. God creates for us. Mm -hmm. John, we're gonna take a break at this point and hold you over for the final segment for anything else you might like to share, any wisdom for our viewers today. So we'll be right back. Hope you're enjoying this mm. conversation in this holy season of Lent. 
because it's all about the glory of God and His divine intervention in us who are so far away. It's not because we love Him, it's because He loves us. We'll be right back. Continuing our conversation with John Sotosante, Mortal Adhesions, A Surge in Battles, The Seven Deadly Sins, to find faith, happiness, peace. Isn't mm -hmm. that what we all want? Faith, happiness, peace. So John, we just want to turn it over to you. We got about three minutes left or so. So what would you like to share with our family? Well, if your viewers are sitting out there saying that I don't have peace or I have this hole in my heart, but I don't know how to fill it. I would suggest that you talk to Jesus because a lot of people say, I don't know how to pray. I don't think there's any absolute way that Jesus wants you to pray, but I think Jesus wants you to have a relationship. And what I did was call out mm -hmm. and cry out and say, God, please help me. And it was such a turning point in my life. And I think that God does care. One of the Bible phrases talks about he counts the hairs on your head. And I think he counts all of us and really hopes that we will turn to him. But he won't force himself upon us. So I think we need to turn to him. And a lot of people are hesitant. A lot of people are afraid to talk about it in, in public. Mm -hmm. It's such a wonderful thing to see a Super Bowl star mm -hmm. get up there and talk about mm -hmm. his relationship yeah. with Christ. So that's my, my point that mm -hmm. I would like to make. Yeah. So we pray that many people today watching this show, as many strong Catholics, many like you, kind of a cultural Catholic, are not getting what it's all about, really being a, a doubter. Say, so is this even real? And you know, you've got to be able to speak that out because that, that's the road to, to healing. You know, if, you, if you're not convinced, it's okay to say, I'm not convinced. Mm -hmm. You know, God, please uh, help, help me if, if you're there. That, that was your kind, kind of prayer. You're gonna have to do something, you know, reveal yourself to me. So hopefully this Holy Week, as I hear you speaking, may this be a time maybe somebody searching the channels, they have no faith at all. Uh, it's just not working for them. You know, you, your prayer, and Joy's favorite prayer is, God help. If you want to make it longer, more elaborate, God help me. Mm -hmm. right. And it's amazing what God could do. It's really a testimony of your life, isn't it? I think it was. It was. And you're still on that journey of God help me. I think mm -hmm. we'll always be on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. We sure, sure will be. But if we can help in any way, mm -hmm. yeah. that's what we want to do, don't we? Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank, well, thank you. you so much. Thank you are a great, great blessing. This was perfect for this time. It's Holy mm -hmm. Thursday right now. And you might say, well, every day for me feels like Good Friday. It feels like crucifixion. It feels like darkness. And just, just confess it. Go before the Lord. Because as it said, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. You have to have the Friday before you go on to Sunday and Easter Sunday. God has experienced and has swallowed everything you're experiencing in terms of the flesh, sin, death, and even temptation. Jesus was tempted far beyond we give in to the temptation. Jesus never gives in, so he sees it the whole full way. Jesus can help you with temptation as well as sin, because temptation isn't sin, but it's provoking you. It's calling, it's appealing to you. So maybe your battle's with temptation. Call on the Lord. Cry out to him. He is faithful and he is just. He will forgive your sins. He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will give you everlasting life. Talk to him. Please talk to him. Mm. He wants to listen to you. He's more ready to listen to you than you are to speak mm. to him. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. You're an important part of this EWTN family. It's a family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now. <laughs>